All right, good morning and greetings from South Georgia, USA. Greetings to the entire world. I want this morning to give a message of hope. A message of mercy. A message of not worrying about the future. For those, all things work together for good for those who love God and are called, appoint, called according to his purposes. I probably butchered that quote, but I think I got it close enough to make make sense of it. Now we're going through a, a pretty big rain event down here in South Georgia right now. And we are having flooding on the rivers, flooding in the low-lying parts of the towns, and general flooding on the farm. Uh, and if you are on a low-lying farm, your fields may be underwater here pretty soon. But I want to encourage people that are going through the trials of life to remember that all things work together for good for those that love God and are called according to his purposes. You know, it occurred to me today, thinking about this, that, you know, we have these supercomputers that can make these, I don't know, millions of calculations per second. Well, you realize that God's brain is better than that? God is... God, the creator of the universe, God is, possesses infinite wisdom and knowledge. So a computer can make calculations, but it can't think. But God uses his brain to or orchestrate the future by using many things that we are unaware of that are happening behind the scenes to bless his children. So you may lose your job. You may have a limb fall on your house. You may get sick even. And of course, we know what the worst thing would be is that a loved one dies, especially a child. But if you believe the Bible, we are told that all things work together for good for those that love God. Hang on to that promise. We do not know the end of the beginning from the end. We just aren't there, you know. It's God that does these things. Our business is to praise God every day. Go about our business, taking care of our families, doing our job, working with our hands. The Christian man is expected to work if it's at all possible. And trust in God. Now the evil one wants you to fret and fear. Jesus said, fear not. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So when the floods of life come, we are to say, 
Praise God. Hallelujah. When the enemy comes against us, we know that God will fight for us even though we don't understand it. It happened to Israel many times when they were faithful, when they proved or showed that they loved God. God would put a hedge of protection around them. A wall made out of spirit. But when they disobeyed, that is, when they were showing that they didn't love God, he would take the wall of protection away. And, of course, in this world, if you're vulnerable, unsaved people will come against you and try to take what is yours. Take your money, take your job, take whatever they can. And put it in their pile. And your pile will go down. And of course in war. Like in the war over in Israel right now. Many nations are coming against Israel. And they have stated. That they want to destroy Israel. To the last man, woman and child. If you're familiar with the Bible, you know that the nations have tried to do this over and over again. And they have not succeeded. And here in the end times, Israel is firmly planted and the nations are coming against Israel again. And we are expecting that the Jews are going to turn to Jesus in the end, which I don't think is going to be long from now. I don't know, but it doesn't seem like it is to me. And they are going to call upon the name of the Lord. Now, many of them are doing it now, but I'm expecting a mass turning. And Jesus promised that when Israel turned to him, that that would mean it was time to come back to earth and set up his kingdom. Now right now, Israel is being molested by Gaza. In the old times, they called them Philistines. It's the same land, same people actually, and they hate Israel. Israel is hemmed in on the north, south, east, and west by hundreds of millions of Muslims that hate their guts. And they want to annihilate Israel, and they think that their world will be good if they do that. They are full of hate. I'm going to read you a, a little bit from the Psalms right now. I just turned to this. Psalm 108, and it's called, the title is, Assurance of God's Victory Over Enemies, a Song, a Psalm of David. And this is what David has to say. And you'll notice as I get down here that you're going to find out a little bit about Philistia, or Samaria, or I'm not Samaria, um, Gaza. All right, this is what David has to say. O oh God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Awake, lute and harp. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. And I will sing praises to you among the nations. 
for your mercy is great above the heavens, and your truth reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory above all the earth, that your beloved may be delivered. Save with your right hand and hear me. So David is asking to be delivered from his enemies. God has spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice. I will divide Shechem and measure out the valley of Sukkoth. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the helmet for my head. Judah is my lawgiver. Moab is my washpot. Over Edom I will cast my shoe. Over Philistia I will triumph. There it is right now. Over Philistia I will triumph. So David is saying that they he will win. Of course, this is uh, a prophecy or a statement for when David was alive, but it's also a prophecy for the end times that Israel will triumph over Gaza. Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me to Edom? Is it not you, O God, who cast us off? And you, O God, who did not go out with our armies? Give us help from trouble, for the help of man is useless. Through God we will do valiantly, for it is he who shall tread down our enemies. So David is saying, he's naming all of these territories. He will divide Shechem, that means he'll own it. The valley of Sukkoth, Gilead, Manasseh, Ephraim, Judah, Moab, Edom, and Philistia. He's telling, he's prophesying what the eventual boundaries of Israel will be. And that will be in the latter times. Now, I, I don't know if you've heard or not, but the, the terrorists are saying that they own that land from sea to sea. That's one of their sayings. And David is saying here, God is going to give that to him or to Israel. So there is a conflict there. The Muslims think that they are going to own that land. And the Bible says that Israel will own that land. So there is a big conflict there. Israel is going to get their back. You think their back is against the wall now? You ain't seen nothing yet. They're going to get their back really to the wall, to the sea. They're going to be hemmed in on all sides. It is going to look hopeless, just like it was in biblical times. Just like it was with the Red Sea. There was no way out. The armies of Pharaoh were upon them. They couldn't climb the cliffs of the canyon to get away. They couldn't go down the canyon back from where, because the army of Pharaoh and the chariots were there, and there was an ocean behind them, and they could not swim across there. But God delivered them. All right, I think there's going to be another deliverance like that. God willing, I will see that with my eyes. And then Jesus will come back. Jesus will do the delivering. How do I know? Listen to this. God, this is the same psalm. 
This is 108, 12, and 13 is the end of it. For God will help us. God, no, let me start again. Give us help from trouble. David's saying that. That's for the help of man is useless. They're not going to be able to defeat their enemies, no matter how many tanks and airplanes and jets they have. The help of man cannot defeat this massive in, uh, enemy that Israel has. Through God we will do valiantly, for it is he who shall tread down our enemies. That was true then, and that is true now. Now, our enemies may not be terrorists, or they may be, but they may be floods, financial troubles, lack of faith, fear. God will cause us to do valiantly, which is to have faith. And he will help us to tread down our enemies. So when we see our enemies, whether it be physical or mental, or both, financial, medical, we know that for those who love God, there is going to be a blessing. And our enemies will be tread down. Might not be on our timetable. We might have to get against a wall. So I want to give hope to you out there that are going through difficulties, even the worst, that you can't imagine how you can be saved. If you love God and are called according to his purposes, he will save you. In due time, according to his timetable, you may need to get your back against the wall a little more, just like Israel is right now. Their back is against the wall. All over. Or the Iranians are backing all of their enemies. So now, I want to say the Lord's Prayer, and I'd like you to say it with us. And trust in God. Grin and bear the difficulties that you are going through now, knowing that you will be caused to fight valiantly and that your enemies will be destroyed. Please say the Lord's Prayer with us. Our, Our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.